This is a conversation with my mentor, JP Numenor. I sat down with him and I said the same thing that all of you asked me. I said, hey, what should I do with my life? Kinda. I said, hey, here are the opportunities I'm looking at. How would you suggest that I best utilize these? And my mentor took them and blew my mind. So I hope you find value in this conversation with my mentor talking about what my best opportunities look like. All right, JP, this, I, have a, I have a selfish episode title today. Selfish episode idea. Well, let's hear it. Okay, so one of the benefits of being able to recruit or serve this time with you is I get to ask you questions about what to do with my life. Okay. And so I'm going to ask you that question. Great. Right? I'm not going to frame it as what should I do with my life because that sounds weird. Yeah. But, but I want to talk about current opportunities that are in front of me right now okay. combined with the current cycle. And I, and I want to hear you ask me the questions that you ask about purpose and why. And because, I, A, I just want to do this. <laughs> Number two, I think there's a lot of people going through a reset right now. The whole world's going through a reset, the right? Great re- the great reset. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll save the great reset for another day. Okay, another, another oh, that episode. would be a fun one. Another, another episode. <laughs> but, but, but in the middle of this great reset, I'm wondering what bugs should I eat according to Klaus Schwab? Um, I can't let it go. So with a lot of people protein. questioning what, you know, what to do next, you reset at 35, Mm -hmm. you know, you went through a whole new chapter at 35. Yes. I'm 35 and you know, I've, I've, I've sort of been finding my way over the last couple of years. And, uh, well, honestly, I've, part of me is like, I'm I'm, kind of want to hurry up and make some decisions and, and like move forward into the next chapter. Okay. So I just wanted to come to you for like some coaching advice. I have all of these opportunities in front of me. I feel honestly pulled in multiple directions. I don't really know where to put my focus. I have all these desires. I want to, I want to own half of Cleveland. You know, I want to go to Cleveland with you and buy up a bunch of real estate. It's a good time. I want to, I want to expand my fund. I want to expand capitalism.com. I want to expand my content. Like I want to do it all. Right. And I feel pulled in multiple directions. And as a result, I'm, I'm sort of, I feel like I'm just frozen in, in not knowing where to put my focus. Can you, uh, can you coach me through this? Sure. What do we do first? <laughs> <laughs> what do we do first? You, you throw in a lot of, a lot of buckets. What are, it's, it's a very simple question, JP. Okay. What should I do with my life? <laughs> I think that's a simple question. <laughs> it's a very simple question, JP. The whole world wants to know what should they do with their life right, right now? I would answer, what do you want to do with your life? What's the most important thing so that when you, when it's all said and done, what was the most important thing that you needed to do? That because are you supposed to know at thirty five? No, not exactly. Okay, good. Well, then I then I get to shirk answering that question. But you get to explore the journey of like you because it is a it's it's a pathway and journey to getting to that. But I really think prioritizing what means the most to you, where you're you're spending your energies every day in your highest purpose. Um, did you did you know that like you you reset at thirty five? Yeah. You started completely over. Right, had no money, had no nothing. You were starting a new business. You were working out of your out of your childhood bedroom, if I right. remember correctly. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Your parents' house. Yeah. The bedroom you grew up in. Yep. You turned it into an office. Yep. Like that's where you start at thirty five. At thirty five. Right. So, did you know those answers at thirty five? No, it was a pro- it was a journey and a process. But also, Ryan, I wouldn't. I would almost say don't get too hooked up on age because I actually do know people like you who, hey, I, I don't know if it's maybe the times that we're in right now where people are figuring it out a lot faster. It's almost like you don't have the luxury of 20 years to figure it out because humanity, maybe it's just the speed of things. I don't know. Yeah. But I actually am meeting a lot of people that are, you know, and also part of it, quite frankly, might be psychedelics right now, the whole popular <laughs> okay. psychedelics. Because like, like, what are psychedelics? It's really intense spiritual, the journey is intense spiritual journey. And so I do think there is a speed up on this. I wouldn't rest on the laurels that I didn't know at 35. I also okay. think that you're incredibly self-aware. Um, I think one of the hardest parts actually sometimes is relishing in your brilliance. It's like you don't fully embrace it. Because the truth is, Ryan, if I was to guess with you and maybe a lot of people, but you particularly, since this is your episode, um, I think you have an incredible wisdom. You've done a lot of work. I think it's from these eyes looking at there, it's part of it's just fully trusting and embracing, which by the way, takes some time. It's easy to say, oh, just just relish and it's it's taking me time. I'm still in the process of really, really, you know, trusting that process that this is exactly the path you should be on. 
So what I'd like to do is sort of talk out some of the opportunities in front of me. Okay. And just hear your feedback. You're pretty good about asking the why question, about poking holes in the thought process. So mm -hmm. is it okay if I just kind of give you a lay of like all the desires, all the opportunities in front of me? Bring it on. Okay, cool. So I mean, where my energy is most spent is on capitalism.com. Capitalism.com as a media property, capitalism.com as a coaching community. I, I would say right now, that, like from a cash flow perspective, from like a long term perspective, it's where my heart is, it's where my energy is. I don't think I've cracked, I, I don't think I've steered the company into like a direct why purposeful mission. We do good work, but I don't I don't think it's the heart is there yet. It's mm -hmm. close, but it's not. Like we feel it, but it is not a focus point, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Everyone feels purposeful, but are not going in a specific direction. Mm -hmm. um, I love the idea of being a real estate mogul in Ohio, mm -hmm. right? This is, I just, I love this idea. The timing feels right. feels right in my skill set, in my heart. I love that city. I want to see that city go through a renaissance. Mm -hmm. That's exciting to me. I run a fund for e-commerce brands and I run it with uh, my partner, Sam, and we do really good work. It produces no cash flow for us. It's all upside. Right. And I've been kind of finding my footing there. It's my first fund, as you know. And it's like it's been successful. It's also been hard because I've never done this before. I'm figuring this out. And then I have other, you know, opportunities. Other I could just bought back my old company. Right. And I love the vision that I have for that. And I love all of these ideas equally. Which on one hand is a good thing because I'm I'm aware that whatever I put my focus into, I can grow into, you know, $50 million, $100 million. The number doesn't matter. I can bring a lot of purpose and meaning into whatever project I put my focus on. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sort of right now feeling pulled in all of those directions. And so trying to narrow in on like, what is the most purposeful, what is the one that is most in alignment with where you want to go. And I don't, I don't have the pressure to like go into a different direction. And that is a blessing and a curse. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how do you make those decisions when you feel pulled in multiple directions? I think more and more, it's the process of knowing ultimately what you want. And like, like for me, like, and I find that what you really want should be able to, you can get to the point where it becomes a paragraph, you know, um, not this long mission statement, but like, like basically I love community. I love a community. It starts with my family. It starts with, you know, my family, it starts with my friends. And then we can talk about thrive and like, there's this, but like, I love exploring this, this world with, with wonderment, childlike wonderment and curiosity and basically building communities that include family first, close friends, my, my city, my country, and then the whole planet. And then mother earth. That's kind of like, and I could have said that more eloquently, but that's kind of like when I know I'm on the right path. It's like, I know when I meet some really cool people like yourself, and then you nurture these relationships that I'm, I'm in my sweet spot. Now there's 10 different ways we can express that, right? There could be the nonprofit, there could be Veritas, there could be Thrive, but they're all actually, you start to think about it, like as a father, um, as a friend, um, as the head of a, of a community called, you know, capitalism.com, as the head of a fund. If you think about it thematically, there's probably things you're doing, all those things that you want to do, right. including real estate, that actually scratch the same thing. Mine is community, it, you know, exploring, learning and exploring mm. with child wonderment, you know, and going from small to large. And so if, if I kind of know I'm in that zone of my personal passion and genius, it makes it a lot easier because it's not so overwhelming. So I'd ask you the same thing. If you could kind of take what I call the Starbucks exercise and you're not only knowing your why, but really nailing it down to like the essence, the essence of what really gives you life and energy. What's, what's your service? What's your unique call? And then realizing that, and then it's almost gets easy because you know what to do with the other things. I, he, I told that is, there's a big brain gasm is that there's a theme that goes through all of those. Yeah. Right. Um, and there are certain aspects of it, like capitalism, the fund and and real estate all have the same theme to it. It's like, as cliche for this podcast is, it's purposeful investing. Right. All those things are like perfect, like purposeful deal making, building relationships with people who are doing something good in the world, 
bringing capital to it, seeing the ripple effects of that change that is created and creating a return in the process. Right? And that, as you say that, so when, as all that happens, as you see, you know, members in your, in your, in your, in your deal room succeeding, or you see their thing of like, what is the ultimate emotional payoff to you? Is it, is it a feeling of fulfillment? Is it a feeling of like love, like, like changing the world through currency? Like what do you, what is like the thought and the feeling of the completion of what you just described? It's like this idea of uh, liberating creativity and, um, I love that. And why is that important you to liberate creativity? Because I think that's who we are when we feel totally safe. Mm. Like when you feel totally safe and plugged in, you we're just we just play. Right. And play is creativity, and that's what comes out of us. Great. So you're trying to liberate people from into play and creativity. Is that right? I, I mean I feel like if I say yes, I'm committing to a purpose right now. But yes, that that, that, that resonates with me. And what does that do for you? What's what's the feeling behind it? Let's let's that's, just... that's like how that's how I play. Okay, that's that's my play. Right. That's I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm basically doing for other people what I want for myself. Which is great. And why do you want that for yourself? Because that's when I feel most like me. And why does it most like me feel like? <sighs> I feel uh, wholeness was the word that came to mind, but mm-hmm. it feels like um service yeah. but it feels like abundant service it's awesome yeah it feels like it feels like creation without a need for anything in return and why and, that, and that's and that's the thing that i think that's the thing i crave crave most right and think about what do you know why you crave it most i know the answer to this one because i know you well enough why is that important because it's fun yeah because it's playful because yeah. it feels meaningful use a think search emotion there's an emotion behind oh love love is the emotion yeah love's the emotion you love people right yeah i do you're 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 a lover of people you always have been and you want to serve and you're you're, you're, so your core it's service and love and that's just your way of express expressing it is through helping people liberate people i've I've got goosebumps yes right this is true yeah and so your way of showing this like service and love is helping liberate as many people as you can from being kind of stuck in a box and using economics and business as a way to free them into creativity, playfulness, joy, and then their own love. So, yes, you're, right. so you think about it and it makes sense that you would go to school to, to be a pastor, to be a pastor. Cause it's actually <laughs> the same thing. You actually yeah, that's about, right. It's really the same thing. You're yeah. now you've just chosen a different medium or a different platform to do the same thing. Yeah. How cool is that? I feel like I'm on drugs right now. <laughs> this is, yep. Right? You are correct, sir. Yeah. So how beautiful is that? Like, it's really not that confusing. When you say, I don't know, I'm 35, you actually, your soul knows exactly. And that's it. So how fun. You know what you're here to do. And then you're doing it. You you lead. You, you like to lead. And, and the reason why you like to lead is because you love people and you want to serve people. And in doing so. You're learning your own process of your own freedom and your own love yeah, even that's right. deeper. That's right. Which is why we all generally do what we want to do. It's 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 a spiritual journey as well as great service at the same time. Since you brought up psychedelics and I told you it feels like I'm on drugs right now. Yeah. This is the the psychedelic um, vision that just popped up me. I was like, if if I believed that our souls choose to come into our bodies, which I don't know, but if if or I were to believe that, I would I would say that I like incarnated in order to explore more love in, in order for that. You definitely yeah. did. I believe that. I know you really well. And I think that's completely true. So, um, and isn't it great? Like your skill set, obviously you, you have a very unique skill set. Like a lot of people can't, can't speak, can't articulate. And you know, your, your success in capitalism has been not only can you speak and articulate and think well, but people fill your heart, whether you know it or not. People feel that love, and they—I mean, they, that the, the key to success is that people feel like you're online. Mm. You're not—you're not reading a script. You're just—you're just being you, and that really has paid off for you. What's interesting about this conversation is, um, I came into this kind of hoping we would narrow in on one of the opportunities, or you give me some things to think about. But what I notice is you're guiding me more towards the being part of it than the doing part of it. Mm-hmm. The the and then bringing the being into whatever you choose. Right. That, that, now we once we kind of know what the platform is, uh, which I think you just figured out in 10, 10, 15 minutes. Now we can start to explore these each one of these. 
Like, let's just, for the fun of it, let's talk about Cleveland real estate. So how can, and I don't know the answer, how can Cleveland real estate, buying homes in Cleveland, where you buy homes and help the community, I've heard you say a bunch of times, how could that help scratch the surface of bringing um, love, playfulness, and creativity oh. into whom? Oh, I, I got this. So I felt like I needed to leave Cleveland, which is my home, in order to explore, play, and pursue opportunities. It just didn't feel like they were in Cleveland. Okay. And I found them in Austin. They're abundant here. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere here. The mm -hmm. city's booming. And I want to bring that back home. Oh. I want to bring you want to share with you want to share with your neighbors and share with your friends back home what you found in That's Austin. That's exactly right. So so but this is cool. We've never had this conversation. Now I understand a lot more of your motivation. Yeah. Like I I love that city and am bullish on that city. And I think it can be a huge hub for entrepreneurship and innovation. And I want to be part of that renaissance. And so I want to invest in that city. Right. And bring but, but, bring that same spirit that I felt like I had to go find so that it stays in Cleveland. This is the most important part of what you've said, though. And in all these conversations about Cleveland, you, you've just you've taken me to a new spot you've never taken me to. Yes. You think it's you've given me all the reasons clean water and it's up north, it'll do well with climate. It, yep. It's kind of but but the last part's actually the most important part uh of what you just said, which is you want to bring back what you found in Austin, almost like in a childlike way. You want to bring it to, you want that's to bring, right. You want to bring that joy back home. That's right. Like like I growing up as the the kid in Cleveland, I was I was, I was the, the weird black sheep in the neighborhood. Like who is this kid that wants to start businesses? Yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. Like those kids are still in Cleveland and they're leaving. Right. So how do you create an atmosphere that celebrates that in Cleveland? Them leaving or you can Cel <laughs> celebrate, celebrates that, that entrepreneurial playful spirit right. and keeps it in the city. And that, and that's how you so revolutionize it. When city. you go back and you, that sentence you just said about how you keep it, if I were to write a business plan, as we start our three-part series together, that's where you have to start your business huh. plan. It's not about flipping. I can tell you the techniques of how to flip the house. I can, I'll take you through the wow. Steps. I just had a, I just had a brain gasm. So what yeah. you're saying is like, if I'm if I'm in Cleveland pitching a bunch of investors, right, or the city, you start with that story. It's like I'm a kid from Cleveland. I left Cleveland, and you tell the story about how you want to bring that home. I yeah. want to bring that the pain of when you were there, feeling like the black sheep. And the pain of being the black sheep and not finding, you knew you had a joy in you and it was not there. And there was pain in that. So you went out to search and what you were searching for is a way to liberate and open up to new energies that kind of had playfulness in it, more community, more, more celebration of entrepreneurs, more opportunities. And here's what I found. And now I want to pay it forward. Yeah. And That's you start, beautiful. so your business plan, then the name of your company, like, let's just go back. Like this as, is episode one of what we're going to do. So this goes back to investing on purpose. This goes back to why. So now you literally, you shape shift out. We can get to technique, but let's talk about the name of the company, the mission of the company, mm. why you want to buy houses out there. And then once we start to play with that, knowing that the whole purpose of why you're doing this is you want to bring a gift to the community. So how can we maximize that gift? So before we talk about how to own homes, how do we maximize that gift? And how will you know, Ryan, how many homes is it or how many people will you have affected or maybe you'll realize that actually the dream is you dream of a fan appreciation day at Cleveland Stadium where you have 60,000 people who somehow get to feel that playfulness and that love. It's a concert that you mm. are promoting. Maybe you own the Indians or maybe you, you promote like the We Are the World of this time concert and 60,000 people in Cleveland will never be the same because Ryan touched it. Like we don't know where this can go, but that... That spins all these things okay. out. All right. So we're to going in a completely different direction than I thought we were going to go, <laughs> which is great, which is great. But but I, I want to, I'm going to play a little harder. Here. Sure. Let's do it. Because when you say, where does this go? What I imagined was that I'm doing exactly what I'm doing right now at Capitalism Moment and doing it in person in Cleveland. Okay. I have an incubator in Cleveland. Great. That is now backing the kid like me. Right. And keeping them in Cleveland. Right. Right. I I had to leave in right. order to find my opportunity. Right. So if I have an incubator that's in Cleveland that is 
finding those uh, those entrepreneurs and investing in them. Great. That feels super purposeful. And you keep them in Ohio. And that is the group, that is the fund that buys the Cleveland Guardians. I love it. Now, you know what's funny about that, Ryan? When you told me the eight things that were going on that were pulling you, that was not one of them. It might have been in your head, but it's not what you said. Yeah. That, you talked about buying homes in Cleveland. Maybe you don't need to buy homes in Cleveland. What you really want to do is exactly what you just said. Maybe you buy homes, maybe you don't, but that might be pulling you in the wrong direction because ultimately you were just been incredibly clear with what you actually want to accomplish. And it has nothing to do with buying homes. Buying homes is a real estate investment opportunity. Uh, which, yeah, I was talking about like commercial, large. But yeah. even even that, that's not the core. And not saying it's wrong, yeah, by so, the way. So yeah, yeah, I get it. So let, let's now take the, now that we've kind of cracked this purpose and yeah. we drip it back into the actual strategy. Yeah, now they, but this is the first time I've heard the actual core strategy. So okay. thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. If we, what I, what I imagine is that Cleveland is like on the lower side of the economic side. And so there's kind of a hurry to get out. Mm -hmm. Like if you have any ambition at all, there's a hurry to get out. Right. So I like the idea of buying these large commercial properties in Cleveland and making them desirable places so that you're proud to live there, so that you stay there longer, right. so they get more plugged into the city. Right. And so like that's how that drips over kind of into the strategy. But you're right. I sort of led with it's kind of the loss. Yeah, I, I led with the logical stuff instead of the the heart centered stuff. You just really, you, it's the clearest. It's the first time I've heard you say why you really want to do it. It's empowering entrepreneurs to stay and grow in their own community. That's really important to you. Mm -hmm. So what I would say again, and like tying that into now that we know your why, your platform, of why that's important to you, that changes to me. It changes the calculus of how you even approach it. Yeah, totally. It changes it from the very first day because you're I, talking. I would about almost it. say to you, look. The real estate part of it is secondary to me. As you talk okay. about it, it's secondary. It's not that it doesn't exist. It doesn't uh -huh. delegitimize it. But if you could take a moment and just say, you know what? Guess what you're pretty good at and you've had experience at doing incubators. You mm -hmm. think you know that. Mm -hmm. The point is, I mean, maybe step one, and you actually think this through, is to create the incubator in Cleveland. That, yeah. It's just capitalism. That's where you start. You don't worry about the real estate. That All this stuff takes an investment of energy and time. Now, there might be a moment with your intention in that business plan that you want to own commercial buildings along with it. But I honestly don't think with your intention that that's, that that's priority one. It might become um, the way Dan Clark of Quicken has changed you know, Detroit. Dan Clark, I remember is Dan. Uh, Dan Gilbert. Sorry, Dan Gilbert has changed Detroit. You know, and it's, it's become real estate, but it started with Quicken. And then it became real estate. Mm -hmm. Maybe it starts with the mission of incubation to bring more energy and life and playfulness and fun. And then the real estate follows. And you'll find, by the way, if you, the clearer you are, guess what you're going to find? You're going to bump in to the young real estate guy who's looking for someone like you to back him, mm. who will do all the work. Mm. So it's not Ryan having to go learn about real estate. It's actually you just getting clear about your intention of what you want to create. And I promise you that person will come at the right time. And you'll, you'll either be an investor, you'll be a silent partner, it'll be part of your incubator. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So I, at the beginning, I mentioned four opportunities that I'm right. sort of looking at. Okay. And that sort of scratches three of them. Like you, you like getting into the heart of it yeah. really scratches three of them, checks three of those. The one that it doesn't scratch is the company I just bought back. Right. 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 And so now I look at this and I think, okay, how do I bring that same spirit into this project because where I feel pulled in multiple directions is like, I am needed for content. I am needed. Like I'm acting CEO of my old company. Also my new company. Right. <laughs> I, I've, I feel I have to show up for our events. I have to promote all of this stuff, right? It's a lot of it is on, it's like dependent on my right. energy. Yeah. And, uh, if I'm not, if I don't have the energy the company doesn't grow right now. What you just did for me is really unlock the spirit of it, which has like unlimited energy to it. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So how do I tap into that? Can we just talk through how I bring that into something that on the, on its surface doesn't fit into the same, right. the so same thing? Before we jump into that, as I said to you in an earlier episode, Ryan, you know, I got, I got involved in senior living because it made total sense to me in my head and on a spreadsheet, but it didn't really fit my mission. Cause you know, even though I'm in the communities, I thought that was good enough, but here was the truth. 
I would walk into my senior communities with those. These are people with Alzheimer's or memory care. And I would almost like, I wanted to run out the door. Like I am not good. That's not, that doesn't light me up. In fact, it's just, to me, it's more depressing than death, watching people mm. lose their memory. And all I wanted to do when I walked those buildings was run the other direction. Mm. Yet I still did the investments. And guess what my biggest losers are going to be? Those buildings. Mm. It was never meant to be. I kind of talked myself into community. I don't like all communities. Here's what I'm realizing. It's not all communities. Mm. It's certain communities that I have energy for. You keep hearing me talk about like responsibility for like people who are like in a lesser position or America's class. That's that moves me. People losing their memory. I have such respect for caregivers. I'm not a caregiver. Yeah. That was my mistake. I, I kind of talked myself into it. So I guess going into this conversation with you, you're almost better being honest because even if you come to the conclusion that either you'll come to the conclusion, I found how it connects or it really doesn't connect either way. Ryan gives you power to make better decisions to free up your time so that you stay congruent <clears throat> to your ultimate, to your ultimate like mission and purpose. Yeah, it makes sense. So I'm not going to, I can't, I don't know if I have a creative, I bet you the new a AI could probably, <laughs> I bet you, I bet you if you typed it in, it, it would find some perfect <laughs> answer to that. But I also read in New York times that, um, this new AI, be careful because it lies a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one flaw of it, that it does lie. Well, like I'll, I'll, I think about um, one of the things that was so fun for me when I ran that company the first time was a relationship I built with my co-founder. And he did the operations. He was the integrator. I was the visionary. And we worked incredibly well together. I didn't get him you know, buying it back. Right. And the one thing that makes me feel really purposeful about this like i have the vision in my head and written down and it's it all makes sense but i get more excited if i think about giving the opportunity to someone because if i think about like empowering the next partner bringing that opportunity to someone in my audience and knowing how many people that follow my work are just waiting for their opportunity now it feels now it sounds interesting why i'm listening to you because it's because it's 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 what I wanted as a kid in Cleveland. I wanted in Cleveland, like somebody's like, just give me an, like, I will prove myself. It's like, give me a way to get plugged in. Mm -hmm. Well, you're gonna have to leave Cleveland for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so look, looking for the up and comer. And Mike, Matt was the up and comer. Like Matt was the hardworking guy who was just like, throw me in, like, I'll figure it out. So then really, what I'm hearing you say, Ryan, what you really want out of sh a sheer strength yeah. is you wanna help, you wanna mentor one special person. Totally. You want to find your next Matt. Totally. Yeah. And by, by you being the visionary and finding a young talent, a, a, you know, a diamond in the rough, let's say, which it sounds like Matt was a diamond in the rough. Totally. You want to, that was such a great feeling because you're actually, now you're going back to mission. Getting people who are locked in their brain through entrepreneurship and opportunity to get liberated into a place of playfulness, fun, mm. and love. And you're, now you want to gift that to someone else because you gifted it to Matt and you and Matt, we're amazing together, created great success. Now you want to do it one more time because it was so much fun. So that's all you really probably need to do. You don't need to be, because I got you get you use the word have to seven times. I have to do this. I have to be yeah. CEO. I, all I heard you kept saying is I have to and I need to. Those are the words you use when you play back this podcast. And so what if you didn't have to? What if you didn't need to? What if you really knew what sheer strength means to you now is giving this gift to Walmart and you're gonna like just tell that to the universe and everything else you're going to outsource until you find that. So wait, so wait, what am I giving to the universe? Telling the universe you're, you're really here that sheer strength is a platform. It's an excuse for you to continue your greater mission of empowering young entrepreneurs. That's all this is about. And you know, this is a mentoring opportunity. You, just, you, you know that you're actually here to give this to a young entrepreneur, but most everything else you're really not meant to do for this. Mm. You're not. So it's like this idea of being active CEO, you just said, you know, you're a visionary, you're not an operating guy. Like you're pulling in things that you don't really need to be doing. And you probably aren't playing to your highest strength or your purpose. That feels very free. So what if you just literally, if you could outsource everything except picking that right person and mentoring them to get to that ultimate mission of another, perp another spot in your life where you've like created, you know, money's a fun outcome. Sure. But it's the outcome of transforming someone's right, life. Right. So what if you get to do that, but don't have to do this the other stuff that lands i know that lands it's uh 
you know, I teach something called the owner's model, which is you staying in the owner's seat and outsourcing the rest. This takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause your job as the owner in that case is to just be on purpose. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like be in that essence. Yeah. That's owner visionary. Right. I'm just sitting with all that. Cause it's, it's like, it's zooming out of the whole thing and finding the reason why it all connects and why all those things are important to me. Like what prompted me to want to pursue these projects in the first place? There's some desire that that spawned from. Yeah. And what I did was I spawned them and I went into them and I spawned them and went into them. And so now I'm down here feeling pulled in all these directions. Yeah. You thought was your strain. Part of it was your magic of like, literally I've done it once. They they took my baby. It was big. They broke it. I'm just going to fix it again to show people like, yeah, this is my wizardry. And that's nothing wrong with that. But that might not be the main purpose of what you need to do with the yeah, company. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, it's very freeing to think about like dropping all that coming up here and then saying, how do I express this? Yeah. And bringing in those pieces. If you hmm. free yourself, you'll have more success. The company Say again? If you free yourself from the rest of it and you're clear about it, you'll actually create greater success. I believe that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. This is actually really helpful. We, we didn't cover the other five pillars, but I promise you if we go through each one of them, Ryan, we could literally go through this with each one of them. Wh- which pillars? Well, you, you, you did four or five things. You talked about making capitalism more mission. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, what, here, what I talked about was was the real estate in Cleveland. I talked about capitalism.com. Yeah. I talked about the fund. Those three all felt this, like they were interconnected when we talked about being that kid from Cleveland. Right. And I don't need to move to, like in my head, I see myself in Cleveland doing this, but I don't have to move to Cleveland to do that. No. Right. I want to, but my family's pretty established here. So, but we'll see how that plays out. Or you have two homes. Right. You're used to having two homes. That's true. Yeah. Add a third. <laughs> so like, we'll see how that all plays out and shakes out. Yeah. Um, but they sort of all match the same essence. Why did I get into this was to create opportunities and playfulness and love. It was just that fourth piece that like my other company. And if I zoom out and go into that same essence, I can see where it connects. It's all the same. And it actually takes you back to being 16 again or 17 again, back, back in school training to be, uh, I almost said a monk. I'm sorry, not a monk. A, a, a pastor. pastor. <laughs> I said, I say a monk. It's the same thing. It's You're the still, same thing. So think about how consistent you've been, Ryan. <laughs> you've been so consistent on your path. Isn't that awesome? It actually kind of is. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's actually. It's just a different congregation. There's just a very simple theme and you're just following. You may, may look complicated. It's just really one mm. simple theme. That's really fascinating. I mean, even if we look at the way that I teach entrepreneurship, Pick the person first. Yeah. Go and serve the person. Build an audience of those people. Yeah. That is very pastoral. It is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's fa- it's fascinating to look at it like that because it there then there really is a purpose and an essence behind it that is fueling all of your decisions moving forward. No, and awesome. I guess we should, it, we should do a podcast around. Yeah. That. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost it's the getting out of that that causes all of our problems and our confusion. A lot of us think we don't know. Like you think of how we started this episode, Ryan, you're like, I'm 35. Am I supposed to know that? I don't think I know that yet. Um, maybe it's simpler than we think. Maybe we make it too, maybe we make it too complicated. This was really helpful and very clarifying, JP. Cool. Thank you very awesome. much. I'm so glad you're my friend. I'm so, I'm so glad we're friend. homies. <laughs> It's, stuck with it's, me, funny, it's funny because like we started this podcast and you're like, can you help me do a podcast? Yeah. And I was like, is this an excuse to hang out with JP? <laughs> and it paid off for both of us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> hey, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this, shoot us an email at investing on purpose at gmail.com. Let us know that you found value and that it gave you clarity for your next moves. Thanks for watching. Deuces. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs>